Maybe related to math? Even more specifically related to the test tomorrow? That'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> let's do one that's a little more interesting, like, Request to do another sum problem. Good. So you can think about J starts at two and then it goes to three and so forth. So what does it look like when J is two? Two plus one. Over two plus one. Plus. Plus. What's it look like when J is three? Four plus one over. Four over two. Is everybody with me? If J is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 minus 1 is 2. So it's like that number is going to be in between those just because of the way it's set up. Oh boy. That's going to be super fun. Now J is 4. Okay. Three. 4. 5. 6. 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. Do you see the pattern? Right? So what's the next one? 6 over. Four. four. So that's J two, three, four, five. We got it. And now we got to figure that out. If J is two, two minus one is one. Three minus one is two. Three, four minus one is three. Five minus one is four. And then three plus two is. So in, in one sense, this inside is like F of J, right? You just plug in something in, and you're letting J change from 2 to 5 in this case. 4 to 2 is 2. Are you guys with that? So it's one level above functions. It says, I want you to plug a bunch of stuff into this function and then add up all of your results. So plug a 2 in, plug a 3 in, plug a 4 in, plug a 5 in. Now add them all up. So first thing I would look for is, you know, what's 4 divided by 2? 5 divided by 3. Ain't sure I could do that. 6 over 4 is 3 halves. And now you just need LC, well, you know, LC to everybody, but the LC is going to be? Six. All right, yeah, I mean, it's easy, right? Come on. So it'll be 18 over 6 plus 12 over 6 plus 10 over 6 plus 9 over 6. 49 over 6. Or you can make it a mixed number, who cares? I like it. So, I mean, the idea doesn't change. There might be fractions in there. Who knows? But you just calculate each one and then add them all up. And this tells you where to start and where to stop. Is that cool? So it is like functions with an extra step. Add the results. I like it. I like it. Do I like it? Hmm. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Yeah. In the calculator, would you recommend using lists and like math sum or just doing No, it? I'm not going to let you do that. Okay. Yeah, I want to see the work. All right. And when you get into stats or whatever else, there's a, or a higher level calculus, you could do sequence stuff in the calculator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here you, I, I make you do a lot by hand just to get in there and see what it really goes into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I were to have trickier fractions, you could just do it all. Yeah, exactly. I mean, once you write this, I don't care how ugly the fractions get, you're in Math 88, right? So this is not Math 88, but once you write this, now you're in Math 88. Now, could be kind of gross fractions, but it's still, you just find the LCD, go to town. Yeah? Um, if the 5 tells you where to stop, why did you add a fifth fraction over 5? So let's see, this is J equals 2, 3, J equals 4, J equals 5, so stop there. See, so it doesn't mean I'm going to have five fractions. It means I start with J is 2 and I stop when J is 5. So J is 2, J is 3, J is 4, J is 5. I stop. Is that cool? Yeah. All right, good. So, I mean, if this was 4 and that was 5, 
I would just have. Yeah. So the, when I said three, four, five, six, this is an interesting thing to point out. There will be a pattern because this defines a pattern. So you will see a pattern. Do you have to see it? No. Could you use it to help you? Yeah. Right. If I had to go up to twenty. I don't want to, I'd go, oh, thank God, seven, eight, nine, ten, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, then I could see the pattern and go, okay, I can write the rest of them out real quick. But there are only four things up here, who cares? But yeah, you can always see a pattern somehow. All right. Yes. So, the ones at the bottom of the practice test have. Number 14? Oh, okay, 11 and 12, so what about them? Oh, I'm looking, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong practice test. I gave away my... Oh, so 8 and 12 are the ones that are No, no, no. So, all right. Um, so if I said f of n equals n squared minus n, what would f of uh, 4 be? Yeah, 4 squared minus 4, all right? So when I see this notation, the, the difference between this notation and this is not as big as you first think. So on this problem, I said go from, uh, what did I use, n equals 1 to 5. So you just plug a 1 to 5 in. Minus, right? Yep. Yeah. You plug a 1 in, like do f of 1 plus f of 2 plus. So I don't know if it's going to help you. That, actually, part of my brain is like, oh, if that helps you, that kicks ass, because students normally don't like function notation. But function notation is just so freaking beautiful. Uh, plug a 1 in, plug a 2 in, up to 5. So if it was I cubed minus 11, you just plug it on it. Well, yeah, depending on, and what does that one start at? It starts at, that one starts at 3. You see that? So plug a 3 in, plug a 4 in, plug a 5 in, plug a 6 in. Exactly. So uh, the bottom tells you where to start, the top tells you where to stop, and there's natural numbers in between. So there's no 4.5. No, exactly. Now, like I said, you could define, but then you'd have to give a, what's called a step size. So here the step size is one, because I go from one to two to three. But I could say step by 0. 0.5, and then it would be one, 1.5, two, 2.5. That would be the next but level of this. In between. Like but then I have to further subdivide it, right? Yeah. yeah. So it depends on the steps, what's called the step size. Do you have to understand that at all for now? No, but uh, somebody had an earlier question about that. The step size is understood to be one normally. And that's what it will be for us. Yeah. Um, for number seven, uh, seven B, you got no solution. Was that because you just plugged in your answer? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, into the original. So if the answer makes any, so so help me out. Remind me, what would the what's the uh, domain for this? doesn't even matter if I put 7 there. I could put anything I want to there. So what's the domain for that? It's very related to a radical. Now think about it. What, is, what does a to the x look like? What does a to the x look like? Can somebody draw that in the air for me? What is a to the x? Like 3 to the x, 4 to the x? You're doing a log. So that looks like this. All right, let me let you absorb that for a minute. Does that go below the x-axis? No. Why not? Why can't I have negative outputs? That's what that means. I want you to realize that that's what that means. I have no negative outputs. Why not? How do you raise x is something? A real number. Say again? X is this, uh, a variable that is... It's, it's real. I like it. So to be honest, you're actually pretty close to the right thing. But it, normally... The way you think about it, I cannot raise 3 to a power and make it negative. I can't even raise 3 to a power and make it 0. That's why there's an asymptote there. 
You can't. If I raise 3 to the negative 1 billionth, that is 1 over 3 to the 1 billionth, which is not 0. It's bigger than 0. It's not very much bigger than 0. As a human, I would say that's 0, but that ain't 0. So, so what's I got to do with what I'm talking about here? If my outputs here can't be... Um, have to be from zero to infinity. My inputs here have to be from zero to infinity because these are what kind of functions? How are they related? Inverses of each other. They're inverses of each other. And that's why the picture for log looks like this. So what's the smallest input I could use? Almost zero. So the domain of this would be zero to infinity. What's got to be true is the inside has to be greater than zero. What got me off on that point? Who asked me? What were you asking me? Oh, why did I get no solution? Because uh, when I plug that negative answer back in, the very first log has a negative inside. Can't use it. It's like checking your radical equation answers. You can't get negatives inside them because we don't want complex solutions. Yeah. Complex stuff in the middle of things. Maybe. How are we doing with that? Is that, is that all right? So it's, uh, what, how do I find the domain of this? What's got to be true here? It has to be greater than zero. Yeah, no. Or equal to zero. So the one big difference is logs can't even handle zero. Plus, square root of zero is zero. So square roots can handle zero. Any root can handle zero. But logs can't handle zero. Okay. So you desperately, if I ask you to, to do an error... Do, do in the air what x squared looks like. All right, cool. Uh, well, some of you guys are almost. So if I say do in the air what a to the x looks like, you desperately have to be able to do that. You've got into the form of these things. a to the x, from your perspective, looks like that. Right? And what's log ax look like? Well, you can see on the board, <laughs> it's going to be that. It's like the reverse of this, right? The, the, the mirror image of that, right? So that would be a log. And this is an exponential. Exponential growth is huge. Logarithmic growth, <clears throat> not. It's very slow, very slow. Exponential, yeah. All right, maybe. Maybe. You might even, if you're doing some business stuff or whatever, you might see something about logarithmic growth, maybe even in uh, biology. Talk about logarithmic growth of things. Exponential growth is like, holy crap, you got to keep cutting it. Logarithmic, I can let it go for a few months. Logarithmic lawn grass. You can you don't have to mow for several months. It's awesome. Yeah. There's a little arrow on seven. Can you point that way? You got me. Let me see. <laughs> oh, I just was saying. There's seven C. The next problem is there. That's all. Yeah. Six, which one? B. B. Oh, uh, so the first thing, how did 6B start? Was it just, is there a 2 out in front of it? I gave all my. Oh, yeah, there's a 2 out there, okay. What was the log base? Log base B. Minus two. It was like that, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So I have a, a property for the difference of two logs. I don't have any property about the difference of a log and twice another log. There is no property for that. I want this to make sense. So what's in my way? This course, Jeff. No, the, the two. Right? So how do I get this? <laughs> So you guys, I'm sure you're thinking that. That's what my degree, man. When there's math, well, it's too bad for you. So up goes the two to get the hell out of the way. Because now the property that deals with log minus log can be applied. That two is in the way first. There's another problem on there. Uh, what was it? Uh, G. Was it seven? Something like that. Or maybe it's capital D. But that G was in the way, so you pull it up, and then these can kill each other. 
I'm sorry, there's a seven there. Okay. Right, that kind of thing, that G's in the way. So I can put it up here, and then these can kill each other, so the answer is D to the G. There's that problem. Same idea. If the coefficient's in the way, you can pull it up. If it's a logarithm, it can go back up as a power. Now, what can I do? What's the property? I'm sorry. What's the property for the difference? It must mean I was dividing. So it's the log of the division of those two things. Now, real quick, real quick. Uh, is everybody cool with what I got up there so far? No. What's up? What happened? We all know this property. Log base B of A minus log base B of, of C equals log base B of A over C. Okay. I know I said that as a declarative statement. I stand by it. We all know this. It's true. Because logs are powers. We'll know I subtract powers when I was dividing the stuff that had the basis. That's why that property makes sense. That's, that's all I just did. There's A. There's B, bam, or, or C in this case, right? Now, a real quick little side note. I want you guys to realize something that, that makes this, it's got to be cohesive no matter which way. Couldn't somebody have said, I don't want to take a two, I want to take a negative two up. So that would become plus. Oh, shit. Well, then I would have multiplied these, right? But what's X minus six to the negative two? It would go down. So I don't care if you look at it that way. It's still the same. So math... If it doesn't work every way that you could legally do it, then I can't use that process. It's not good. It's got to be consistent with itself, and it, and it is. So you, you can make every log positive. You just bring up a negative power, and those would end up on the bottom. So now what can I do with the inside? Yeah. I like that. You guys get a mod minus one. You're totally about and they can kill the next minus six, and then it's six minus five. Okay. All right, maybe, possibly, could be. Yeah. Uh, the first one. The graph, the log. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So this is sort of like when we were graphing the square roots and we had to be smart about our inputs. I don't want to graph square root of 5. I want to graph square root of 4. Because that's 2, that's nice. So here, if I want to make an XY table, and you have to know going in, it's going to look like this. What we need to figure out are the specifics. So don't give me this as an answer. But you should know that that's the look of it. It's got to look like that. You just want to find specifically where are the anchor points and then put this, the shape on it. Uh, so what are some smart things to put here? What can I take the log base 2 of? Say again. 1. I love it. 2 to the what power is 1? 2 to the 0 power is 1. I like it. So remember, anything I plug in, I figure out the answer is going to be the power this needs to become that. So what's another good thing to plug in there? 2. 2 to the what power is 2? 1. I like it. 4. 2. Something you guys should think about is, watch this, if I put a negative 1 there, that's the power that 2 needs to become what? Beautiful. It's power! So that's going to help you fill in this side of it. What was 0? Okay, sure. What? Hell no. So what is it saying? What do you raise 2 to to get 0? 2 to the first is 2. 2 to the what power is 0? Undefined. I like it. I like it. Not really no solution because it's not an equation, but this number would be undefined. There is no number defined to do that. I like it. Is that cool? I understand the 1 and 0, 0 and 1 seem interchangeable, but they're so desperately not, right? 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 1 is... Oh, shit. See, so they don't switch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So then when I go to graph this, I already know what the shape is supposed to be. So 1, 0, 2, 1, 4, 2, 1 half, negative 1. So there it is. We. That's not like a good roller coaster. We. <coughs> this is fine. 
Okay. Be really careful about making it clear that this is the asymptote. Don't don't cross that. Because it'll come at you if you cross. Yeah. Is there certain points you have to pick in order to keep um, the shape plugging them in, or uh, is it just? Even. Now again, so why didn't I put a 3 in there? Because I can't raise 2 to a power and make it 3 easy. Oh, okay. There is a power that will make that happen. It's just not a it's good looking power. I want nice whole numbers to graph. Yeah. Okay. So like if I wanted another one above 4, what would I pick? Six. What do you raise 2 to to get 6? Wait, no, no, 8. What 8, there you go. Now you're thinking. Eight. Or, you know, 1 fourth, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 1 over each of these would also work to just be the negative of those. If you know the shape of something, you need three, maybe, right? Yeah, because and you want something that gives you that kind of goes on both sides of things. So if you're doing a parabola and you only get the positive stuff, you might think it's a it's a line or something. If you get the other side, oh yeah, shit, it's supposed to go like that. So you want to investigate both sides of something, the positive side, the negative side. Yeah. Yes. The asymptote is the is the line in there is. Yeah, it gets infinitely close to it, but it never gets to it. Oh. Talk about first one. Yes. For seven C, how did you get that? Oh, um, so what did it, it started off like? What did it start off as? It was 4x squared e to the negative. What is it? e to the 2x, right? Minus uh, 12x e to the 2x. Is that what it was? Yeah, equals 0. So just because I threw some e to the 2x's in there, how do you solve something that's not linear that's equal to 0? You factor it. All right, so the first step is not what you had trouble with, right? What can come out, obviously? 4. 4. X. E to the 2X. E to the 2X. So what's left here? X. That X three. minus three. 3. Everything else, gone. So obviously X equals 3 is sitting there staring you in the face, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the answer everybody forgets. Can you make 4, 0? No. No, screw it. Can you make E to the 2X, 0? No. What's it? Yeah, is it asymptotic there, right? No. Screw him. But can you make x squared zero? Or x, sorry, x zero? Yeah. yeah, if you make x zero, then x is zero. It's amazing. So that's where I got the x equals zero answer. If x is zero, isn't it zero? Everything dies. He dies, they die, everybody dies. Heavy metal. Poor Jesus. There he is. Remember that one? Sorry. You should really look that up. The first heavy metal movie, not the second. Classic. Oh, yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, so you can even watch the uh, South Park episode where they're sniffing yeah. the tanner. I wouldn't recommend doing that. I love it. Some of you guys are like, dude, just stick to the math, all right? You're freaky. All right. Good stuff to watch. Uh, and what's, uh, where do you want to go next? Yeah. Can you do uh, 2A? Oh, I keep looking at the uh, practice fine. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, all right. What did it say? Uh, f of x equals 2 to the 6x plus 3. Oh, yeah, okay. So, um, let's start off. So, a to the x. You've desperately... So, you got to know what the thing looks like. You should be able to just give me that. If I said, give me a rough sketch, no scale, no anything, I probably wouldn't say that. That would be acceptable. All right, that's what that looks like. What does that imply about its domain? Yes. The domain. What x value? Are there any x values that I'm not allowed to use? No. Don't every every x value has an output. Yeah. So what's the domain? Any real numbers. All real numbers. I like it. That symbol means all real numbers. So I don't know if you know that. Just the R. R with an extra spine to it, right? Okay. Double spine R. What about the range? Yeah, you do. You look at the picture. The numbers it's are greater than the smallest. It doesn't quite get here, but what's almost the smallest number? Smallest output? Almost zero. Zero. Almost zero. 
And then where does it go from there? Infinity. All right. So the I can't change the domain. If I move it left or right, it's going to still be this. It's like an infinitely long bar. If I move it a little bit, it still goes to infinity in both directions, right? But if I move it up or down, holy shit. So if I did this, where does this asymptote go? Everything goes up three. So where's it? Where's the asymptote now? At y equals three, right? So then it would look like that. So what? So the domain is still the same thing. What's the range become now? Three. Almost three to infinity. Yeah, there you go. So it's all about knowing what the shape of something normally is. And then I'm going to give you some shifts, maybe. So remind me, for the second part, that's, that's part A. For the second part, remind me, how do you find the domain of this? Set equal to or greater than or equal to zero. Almost. Or yeah, greater than equal to zero. You said 4x plus 3, greater equal to zero. All right. And then solve, right? Because the inside of a square root can't be negative. So it's got to be at least zero. So what's true about the logarithm? What's got to be true about the inside of a log? What was it? Two exponents. The inside of a log has to be greater than zero because it can't even handle zero. Or level zero. Again, it's all about knowing the shape. If you know the shape of something, you know it's got to go from zero up, the inside does. The inside's not just x, so I've got to figure out what x values make that happen. So it's very much like what we did here. Same idea here, except it's got to be greater than zero. It can't even handle zero. Poor little dude. Yes, no? It has a basic time. What is it? Um, oh, it doesn't even matter. That's why I didn't even put it there. The base doesn't change anything. No. Right? I mean, it's uh, no matter what the base is, the inside has to be greater than zero. Now here, of course, if that was a cube root, what would I say for the domain? Yeah, it would be all real numbers then. Screw that. Because right, cube roots and all odd roots can handle. But the same thing doesn't apply here. So be careful. There are some things about logarithms that are sort of like radicals. But don't try to make too much the same. Don't. Not that one. Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, <laughs> there it is. So uh, let's see, what did it say? It said h of something. H of g of x? No, 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 wait, wait. 9b. It's h of g of x. h of g of x, right? So where do you start with this problem? Chris is like, dude, I asked you. I'm throwing it to everybody. Yeah, where do you always start with any... Is that the right one? What's up? Oh, yeah. Let's look at the practice test for tomorrow. No, it's on D. No, but I need help on that You need help on this one? Okay. All right. So that was good. It still works. No, who's looking at the practice file? Yeah. So where do I start with any simplification? I always start the innermost parentheses, right? I always start inside because that's order operations. It tells me to do that. So this will be H of what? Yeah, g of x is what? x cubed? Minus, minus, minus 2. Okay. There it is. Yeah, cool. Alright. And then what's h do to anything? It takes what that is and it squares it and then adds 6, right? Isn't h of x is x squared plus 6. So whatever that is, it does this to it. So whatever that is, it's going to do this to it. Let me stop there. I, I wish I could understand. Anybody who's having trouble with that, you're making way too much out of it. It's just pure substitution. This is the form of h. So h of who cares is who cares squared plus 6. Whatever's in there. It could be Mr. Bill. It could be somebody's name. It could be... It could be log. Everyone knows it's log. <laughs> it rolls downstairs. Rolls over the name. Yes. It's going to be log squared plus six. So here, what do you got to do? There's one little bit. You got to clean it up a little bit. Just foil it out and add six to it. Not a big deal. 
you know, if you didn't do it, I wouldn't be overly, because again, if it was a seventh hour here, dear God, dear God, don't waste time. Like, number one, this happened to somebody, they just took like half the time doing this, and I'm like, there was no reason for that. Don't do that. A seventh hour. All right, sorry. It's just, that's just busy work. I'm not going to make that happen. How would, how would, on the answer, so it should be square. Yeah, so how do you do this? Yeah, cool. Right? So you get x to the 6 minus 2 minus 2 plus 4 plus 6. Is that cool? Yeah. So remember, anything squared like that, you got to write twice so you don't forget any terms. No, no, no. I already there's plus four, plus six is plus two. Already added the six in. Oh, okay. Yep. That's it. That's it. Yeah. There's nothing more you can do with it. Did it say h of g of three? If it did, I would put a three in there. To be honest, I wouldn't even do this shit for h of g of three. I figure out what g of three is first, and then plug that number in h. You don't have to do all this for that. It's more specific. I'm getting too many people that are still telling me that. You know, if I said, what's G of 7, I get people tell me it's X cubed minus 2 times 7. 